Icon design has never been a bigger thing, and when it comes to designing icons, uh, it's easy to keep things monochrome. It's really easy to design a great shape, to be satisfied with that shape, and to leave it at a shape. But uh, these days, uh, sometimes the icon does a lot of speaking for itself, and with that, you may need it to be more colorful or more engaging. So uh, I'm looking at the Icon Mega Pack Sketch Edition here that's available on LearnSketch.com, and I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to pick, uh, let's single out this icon right here. And let's say that we want to turn this icon into something more interesting than just a monochrome icon. I'm going to copy this, and I'm actually going to paste it into a new document. And when I do that, it is, of course, white. So I'm going to start by changing this to, uh, we'll start with a dark gray. And the idea here is that it's made of pieces, and these pieces can all be different colors if we want them to be. These buttons, this knob can be red, the base could be brown, it could be black. We've got some choices here. The wire could be black. Uh, but the way it is right now, it is all one shape. It's all one layer. Now, even though we have a disclosure triangle here, and we can expand this and we can take a look inside and see that there are separate parts. If we go and we try to take this part, for instance, and we try to make it a different color, the whole thing changes color because it is still one shape. There's no getting around that until we separate it. So just like we've talked about Boolean operations and how to combine shapes, we're going to do the opposite right now. We're going to try to break this apart real quick. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the insides of this, uh, all except the bottom layer there, and I'm going to drag them up above the main icon here, thereby breaking everything apart. Now one weird thing that happened here is that the reflection on the knob uh, has disappeared, and that's because it's still there. It's just filled with the same gray as the knob. Uh, so I am going to use a Boolean operation here. I'm going to subtract uh, that reflection from the ball below. Now everything's looking good. So now I've got the ball, I've got the shaft, I've got the button, I've got the button, I've got the wire, I've got everything separated. So now let's give the ball here a color. I'm going to go over to fill and I'm going to make it a nice red color kind of a in the flat palette, a little desaturated, not completely uh, bright. You can see down here, saturation and brightness are far from 100. If you guys don't see HSB numbers down here, hold shift on the keyboard and click, and you can toggle back and forth between RGB and HSB. So I'm trying to keep it away from 100 and stay with that flat color palette. Uh, also, I'm gonna make these buttons that same color red. So a uh, little trick here, if I do Control C on the keyboard, it gives me my color stealer, my little color picker, and I can go and grab that same color red. So that's cool. Now I've got the same color red a couple of times. And then here for this little shaft, let's just say hypothetically that this is metal and we'll make it a lighter gray. So it's sort of an aluminum color like that. Perfect. Cool. And then the wire down here, we can grab that wire and we can make that a darker black as well if we want to get really detailed. Uh, now for this down here, it, let's let's get a little interesting with this. Let's do a little shading. Uh, there are two little bits of shading that we could do here, and uh, I would honestly like to do both of them. So let's start with the little shaft up here, and then we'll do the base down here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and duplicate it. I want to have two of them. One shaft that's going to be left alone, one that's going to be cut into a shadow. So now that I've got this second copy, uh, we could rename it if you want to stay organized, but just be aware that there's one below and one above. I want to select the one that's above. Uh, the other thing I want to duplicate is the ball. I'm going to hit Command D on the ball, and now I have a ball sort of in the middle of the sandwich and a shaft in the middle of the sandwich. And then I've got a ball up above and a shaft down below, which I'm going to leave the, two, the outer two I'm going to leave alone. Now the inner ball here, I'm going to select, and I'm going to nudge it down and to the right. Uh, you could also click and drag it. Uh, I'm just doing a little nudge there. And now I'm going to select both the lower ball, the one that I just moved, and the upper shaft, the duplicate that I created, and I'm going to use intersect. And by using intersect, it's going to take the overlapping parts just the overlapping parts and make them a separate layer. And now that I've done that, you can see that all the little bits and pieces have become part of the inside of the shape. I don't need all that. I just needed to get this little bit where I've broken off a piece of the top of the shaft where I want it to be a cast shadow from the ball up above. So now that I've done that, I'm going to flatten it with the flatten button at the top. And now you can see it's no longer uh, a crazy compound shape. And now I'm just going to go back to fill 
and I'm just going to bump the brightness down just a little bit. And now I've got a shadow coming off the ball. But now that's the only thing with a shadow, so it looks kind of funny. So I'm going to do the same thing down here, except down here this is going to be even more simple. I'm going to duplicate this layer, this uh, base here for our game controller. I'm going to press Command D to do that. And now I'm going to hold Option and drag so that I get a second one. And I'm um, holding the shift key as well to move it perfectly down. I'm going to move it down like three quarters, two thirds of the way. And now you can see how these overlap one another. So now I'm going to select this top copy here and the other top copy here. And on my layers panel, you can see that I'm leaving the bottom one completely alone. And I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to do intersect. And that's going to give me the area where those two things overlapped, which is just this little bottom piece down here. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to go over to fill and I'm going to turn the brightness of that bottom part down just a little bit, just a few points. So now I've got a shaded bottom. So now I've got quite a bit of shading going on. And to be honest, I don't like that the wire is a different color. I'm going to do control C and I'm going to steal the darker color from the bottom down here. Now that looks good. Nice and cohesive. We're only using a few colors here and those few colors are creating really a very three-dimensional icon. And now to turn it into one thing, we can't merge it all together. If we merge it all together, it's all going to become one color. So I'm going to select all these layers here and I'm going to hit Command G to group them. And now that group, I can call whatever I want. I'm going to call it Game Controller. And now it's ready to be made exportable and it's ready to go on and be a beautiful icon somewhere. Really cool stuff. So it's not too difficult once you get things separated and you figure out how these Boolean operations can work in your favor. Uh, you can really make very complex icons very quickly. And uh, this is all based on a simple white icon that we started with from the Icon Mega Pack. Look at what we started with. That's pretty cool. So go to LearnSketch.com, watch more tutorials, subscribe if you haven't already, get yourself the Icon Mega Pack, and uh, I'll have more cool stuff coming soon. All right, guys, have a good one.